what works? A lot of things work, but let's cover a couple. To me, having a thorough understanding of what is the most important to you for this trip and then being prepared to make sacrifices if the time is shown. That's the hard part. It's saying to yourself, what am I prepared to give up to ensure that I optimise my travel? And that's one of the key things that we like to sit down and help to find a clear purpose for your travel, something that gives you some unique experiences, pushes your boundaries a little bit, and with luck creates a lifelong memory for you. So let's carry on and see what else we can discover. I've got a couple of things that don't. This is number one in my opinion. Trying to see all of New Zealand in too short a time. Much, much better to select an island or a region. And like, for instance, North Island or South Island, as I mentioned, or just go to Queenstown or to uh, Central Otago or up to the Central Hawke's Bay region. But whatever you do, please, you'll be shocked at how much there is to do. I couldn't even begin to share with you a fraction of what's available. There are three main ways to experience New Zealand. They've got the motorhome, which is like a snail with your house on your back. You can park anywhere, as you can see there. That person would have camped there for the night and been fine. You've got the car, you can use a sports car or you can uh, use any other econ economical car. And then you can do the coach. Now, each of these have their pros and cons, and I'll cover those with a tip or two on each one as we move forward. So stick around. To me, there's four little known but valuable travel tips you can utilise to enhance your experience. I'm going to share these with you based on my 26 years of travel and I'm sure you'll find them valuable. So stick around, I'll be less sharing them as we go through. Let's start off with the possible drawbacks of car hire. It can be stressful on the driver as a high concentration is needed. As I mentioned earlier, there's tight roads and uh, also, you know, there's often uh, partners issues with uh, reading maps and where you're going so be aware of that uh, you often feel rushed due to the fact that there are much more to do than plan I promise you you will find so much to stop and do and see between any destinational point in New Zealand that you'll be shocked and you'll easily say to yourself I need a lot more time my sister and her partner have been traveling New Zealand for five years solid in their own self-contained bus motorhome type thing and they still reckon I've got another couple of years to complete it. So that just gives you some idea of what there is there. Budgets are much harder to adhere to because there's just so many different ways and things that you can spend money or New Zealand to have new experiences from horse riding to hang gliding to uh, jet boat riding to all kinds of off-road and activities, not to mention uh, all the little other attractions. Benefits of car hire, and there are some quite good ones. Cars are usually very affordable in New Zealand. The distances are short, so you don't use a lot of fuel. Uh, usually, I would say the bigger brands with their uh, have a much better support system. So if something happens when you're uh, hiring your car, having a bigger brand, the benefit of that is that you can be in a position where you'll be back on the road again quickly if either you have a breakdown or an accident. Important to remember because people do have breakdowns and the odd accident. You set your own timetable, your own pace. So uh, anybody who wants to be 100% in control, doesn't like to be regimented by somebody else, do it by car. Well, we're at the halfway point already. This is a uh, time for a coffee break. So if you've got a minute, get up and have a coffee. This is a fantastic place to have a cup of coffee too. And it's 75 kilometers out of Christchurch and it's just unbelievable little place. Akaroa to me is one of the hidden jewels of, in New Zealand. You'd be surprised how many people just don't find the time to go there. Believe me, everyone who goes to Akaroa is so glad. Please make it a coffee stop for yourself. Okay, let's get on with the car hire tip. The first one is get a four times four. Uh, by that I mean a four wheel drive like in the photo below. Uh, a diesel motor is, uh, diesel's a little less expensive in New Zealand than petrol. The economy is good and you've got some flexibility as you notice in that picture there. The roads are uh, probably alright to drive a car down but at least you're more conditioned with a four wheel drive and I like the fact that you've got a bit of height. As you can see on the right hand side of your road there, the grass and shrubs do grow quite high in New Zealand due to the excellent growing conditions. So I thought I'd chuck in a bonus tip. And it's uh, prepay your travel insurance before you arrive at your destination. So when you book it for your travel agent, take out a policy that includes car insurance. You'll save yourself a lot of money when it actually comes to the car hiring. 
possible drawbacks of motorhomes. And let's have a look at these. Uh, a confined, sorry, confined space in a motorhome. It's not a lot of room as a rule, and uh, you're going to have everything in there. You're going to be living in it for a week or two at least. You don't have a guide to tell you about the areas, the culture. It's easy to miss historical significant places. Uh, not like on a coach tour where a, a coach guide will be able to tell you all the way along what's going on and uh, fill in a lot of blanks for you. Also, it's not that good from a family perspective because, or with a partners because you end up having to have them sitting in the back and they can't see forward so easy. Uh, the roads in New Zealand can be very steep, lots of corners and people driving these bigger than what they used to vehicles will uh, find that a challenge at times. Benefits of motorhome, there are some and they're quite good too. All inclusive accommodation transport, as I said, you're a bit like a snail, you've got your home on your back. Uh, great flexibility as you can pull up and stay anywhere you like and most places in New Zealand are legal so you can pull up at a beach, a lake, uh, anywhere where you can pull off the road and not block traffic you can pretty much stay in a motorhome uh, for a night or so. They don't like you staying too long and you will see people parked all over the place in New Zealand in that manner. You meet others who are enjoying similar experiences. Everybody who goes in a motorhome will pretty much come back and tell us that somewhere along the line they met some other couples they were doing motorhomes and then it's funny how every few days they end up in the same or similar destination so uh, great way to make friends and the best thing about it I suppose is that you're self-contained not only with your accommodation but you get to cook and you can use local food in New Zealand you can buy uh, food off roadside stalls very very inexpensively and the best part is it's fresh my inside tip for motorhomes always get the largest six berth if you can it's worth the extra money even when there's only two of you you'll be surprised the most important thing is you get a lot more room bonus tip treat yourself to a nice hotel every week don't just stay in a motorhome because you're in a motorhome it's good to get out of it it's very confined and most people's houses are much bigger than motorhomes so imagine sitting in a motorhome for two weeks so enjoy a hotel give yourself a treat at least for one or two days on a uh, a week you'll be very happy about that